You know what the very first use of electricity was? Anyone? No, not the mosquito zapper, although I'm feeling you on that one. It was probably the electric light. And that makes sense. Seeing is very important to people. But nature seems to be throwing darkness at us just about every day. The first electric light was designed way back in the 1870s. And then, for some reason, for the next hundred years or so, we engineers were like, nah, that's good enough. We're going to go make radios and TVs and computers and stuff. So there we were, stuck for a century with prehistoric, energy-sucking, white-hot filament burning in argon gas or whatever, replacing our bulbs constantly. Ugh. Luckily, we finally turned our engineering attention back to lighting again. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. LED lighting is revolutionizing lighting design. And as engineers, we need to keep up with the finely fast-moving technology. We need to think about power consumption, form factor, reliability, spectrum, and a bunch of other constraints in our lighting designs. My guest today is Peter Swift from Amphenol ICC, and we're going to dive deep into the latest LED lighting solutions. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol ICC. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So we're talking about the newest in LED lighting solutions today. But before we get started, how did we get to where we are today in terms of lighting technology? As you can see on this table, humans have been using fire to create light for at least 400,000 years in the form of torches, various types of lamps, candles, and as technology developed, gas and kerosene lamps. In the 1800s, kerosene lamps were the dominant form of indoor lighting and are still used in developing countries today. And gas lighting was used for street lighting in factories and in theaters. But all these forms of lighting were still basically burning fuel to create fire. Then in 1875, the first electric arc lamp or electric candle was developed. And by 1890, over 130,000 arc lamps were in use in the U.S. for street lighting. In 1879, Thomas Edison introduced the first incandescent light bulb. And since then, other forms of electric lights have included high-voltage HID, or high-intensity gas discharge lamps, halogen bulbs, which consume less energy but run much hotter than standard bulbs and have a shorter lifespan, and then fluorescent bulbs have since followed, which run cooler, use even less energy, and last longer than incandescent bulbs. Other technologies also exist, such as sodium vapor, metal halide, and mercury vapor, but many of these are being replaced by the newest technology, solid-state light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, which offer some tremendous benefits over other forms of lighting. So that takes us to today, with electric lighting being used in every corner of the planet. All we need is a power outage to be reminded just how dependent we are on electric lighting and our power grids. This also means we need not only cost-effective and efficient lighting technologies and products, but also reliable networks and control systems, as well as standards, to sustain this huge and rapidly growing market. For sure. Now, Peter, what kinds of trends are you seeing push this change in this area? Well, as I said, lighting is a huge industry. The overall global lighting market in 2019 was valued at $118 billion U.S., the LED lighting market made up about 50% of the total at 54 billion US in 2019. And with the projected 13 to 14% compounded annual growth rate, it's forecasted to be about $260 billion by 2030. The largest market is in the Asia Pacific region. And while it continues to be one of the highest growth markets, Latin America, the Middle East, and Africa are still in the adoption phase of LED lighting with much less installed infrastructure, and so they're expected to experience astronomical growth rates. But there are a number of factors driving this growth. First one is efficiency. LED lighting technology is at least 90% more effective or efficient than incandescent bulbs, meaning 90 to 95% of the energy consumed by LEDs is converted to light and only 5 to 10% into lost heat energy. This represents a massive cost savings in energy and sustains the huge demand for new installations and retrofit programs. The transition to energy-efficient lighting, including LED, 
has the potential to reduce the total global electricity demand by 30 to 40% by 2030. And it's expected to result in energy savings of $18 billion in electricity costs by 2025. Virtually every lighting market is impacted. And in 2020, more than 75% of the outdoor luminaire shipments incorporate LED technology. Another factor is product life. LEDs are more durable than traditional lighting technologies, resulting in even greater savings as the installed base increases because you don't need to replace LED lamps as frequently. LED bulbs typically last 25,000 to 50,000 hours compared to only 1,000 hours for traditional incandescent lights. Another key factor is product cost. There's been a marked reduction in the cost of LEDs over the last 10 to 15 years, and the adoption of stricter regulations and a focus on sustainable development by governments, coupled with incentives and rebates, have driven the adoption of this technology, and this helps to fuel its growth in virtually every sector of the market. Finally, connectivity. Lamps using solid-state LED technology are essentially electronic devices, which can be part of an addressable network and communicate with a control system. LEDs enable this with their localized driver modules, which talk to the network and process the commands to turn the LED on or off, change its light frequency or color, and control its intensity. This connectivity enables lighting to be a central part of what we refer to as a smart system. So, Peter, where are you seeing innovation in lighting technology today? Everyone is familiar with the term the Internet of Things, which is essentially a network of interconnected and addressable smart devices allowing communication and control using high-speed networks. This, in turn, gives rise to the concept of smart systems, from smart cities to smart buildings and smart homes. Smart systems integrate sensors, controls, drivers, displays, and more to make homes, commercial buildings, and cities operate more efficiently and safely. Smart homes allow residents to access and control virtually every device in their home, including speakers, thermostats, clocks, doorbells, cameras, electrical outlets, appliances, security systems, and of course, lights. This can be done remotely using your smartphone or computer or in your house using voice commands with a smart speaker. Smart buildings take it to another level through the use of smart building management systems. These are designed to enable the various systems in a building to function efficiently and are often energy related. Simple examples include control of LED lighting fixtures through the use of sensors to detect occupancy, and ambient lighting conditions to integration and control of energy systems such as solar power generator with energy storage technologies. Smart building systems need to be scalable to allow for growth and secure to ensure safety and protection against cybersecurity risks. Smart homes and smart buildings, along with many other devices and systems, are the building blocks for smart cities. Using information and communication technology, connected to the IoT network, optimizing the efficiency of a city's operations and services. Smart city systems gather environmental data, provide information, detect emergency situations, and control key services like lighting and public areas based on where and how it's needed. Smart technology and systems are the future of cities, and smart lighting is the future of LED lighting. That makes sense. Now, I would imagine that standards also play an important role in lighting technologies. Is that right, Peter? That's absolutely right. And having established standards is very, very important. Safety standards ensure that products meet minimum requirements to protect people and equipment in a variety of conditions. UL, or Underwriters Laboratories, provides an international network of product certification organizations which help to provide multiple recognized international certifications from a single certified testing body. This allows our products to be certified and recognized for use in North America, Europe, China, ASEAN, South America, India, and other diverse geographies. And then there are design standards. Designs and qualified compliance to the requirements of internationally recognized standards organizations ensure mounting and mating compatibility with products from other suppliers. This governs the dimensions for product housings and contact geometries, ensuring a reliable fit between products from different suppliers. There are a few different standards organizations from the design perspective. Two of the primary governing standards organizations for the lighting products are NEMA ANSI and Zaga. ANSI, which is the American National Standards Institute, was formed in 1918, bringing together various American engineering societies to perform an impartial national body to coordinate standards development and eliminate confusion on acceptability. NEMA, which is the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, 
founded in 1926 to provide a forum for the standardization of electrical equipment, is an ANSI accredited standards development organization. ANSI standard C-136 defines a group of standards for roadway and area lighting equipment. ANSI C-136.41 specifically describes methods of light level control between an external locking type photo control or similar sensor device and the internal dimming control driver for a street or area lighting luminaire and specifies the mechanical, electrical, and marking requirements for the dimming, locking type photo controls and mating receptacles. Amphenol manufactures products meeting ANSI C136.41 components, including our FLA and FLB series of receptacles, dimming modules, bases, and domes. Next comes Zaga. With the development of robust, cost-effective, high-intensity LEDs, related technologies have developed, including light engines, chip on board LEDs, drivers, dimming controls and protocols, heat sinks, optics for LEDs, and low voltage interconnect technologies. In order to provide a standardized framework for the development of LED luminaire products, Zaga was formed. Zaga is an industry-wide consortium to provide standardized specifications for electrical and mechanical interfaces between the various components used in LED luminaires with the goal being to permit interchangeability between the products from different manufacturers. Zaga subdivides its various specifications into books, with each book defining the interface between one or more components of an LED luminaire. There are currently 25 Zaga books, and Zaga Book 18 defines the smart interface between outdoor luminaires and sensing communication modules or nodes. Amphenol's FLS series products comply with Zaga Book 18 specification, and are functionally similar to those defined by the ANSI C136.41 standard, although they're mechanically different. Zaga Book 20 also falls into the sensor and communication module category, but for indoor applications, for office, industrial, retail, and hospitality lighting. Book 20 defines a smart interface between an indoor luminaire and a sensing or communication module or node which typically provides sensory inputs such as ambient light level, movement, air quality, or other environmental conditions, or it enables communications between network components such as a wireless control system. The node device that connects to the LED driver by way of the Zaga Book 20 interface connector. The use of the standardized Book 20 connector ensures easy assembly and field serviceability and ensures node devices from multiple certified manufacturers can be used interchangeably and provides a wide variety of sensor and communication function options and configurability for end users. Okay, so Peter, before we dig into the details here, how do the various lighting technologies break down? There are categories for indoor and outdoor lighting, right? Yeah, that's right, Amelia. Basically, all the lighting applications can be broken down into indoor or outdoor with a whole lot of subcategories in each. Indoor lighting typically includes lighting for commercial buildings, residences, and industrial environments with a whole host of specialized applications, but usually in a controlled environment. Indoor lighting systems typically don't have any environmental ceiling requirements, and the emphasis is on ease of use, low cost, and reliability. This is where products such as our Zaga Book 20 FLM series of connectors would be used for connections inside the luminaires requiring digital interface and communication between components such as drivers, light engines, and sensors using the Digital Addressable Lighting Interface, or DALI, protocol. Outdoor lighting connectors, on the other hand, are typically designed to be used in a range of much harsher environments than indoor lighting connectors, since they can be exposed to elements such as rain, snow, wind, and extreme temperatures and prolonged exposure to UV light from the sun. All of these factors can inflict a real beating on outdoor connectors, which is why they are often designed with an IP, or ingress protection rating, to keep water and dust from penetrating into the luminaire and prevent damage and corrosion. They incorporate tough UV-resistant engineering thermoplastics and product designs intended to ensure long life and reliable performance. Considering where some of these products can end up, it could be very difficult and expensive to replace or service them, so they need to be designed to last. Just like indoor lighting, there are many subcategories of outdoor lighting, some of which are very specialized. The connectors used on street lamps for the external photocells and sensor or communication nodes are one such group of specialized outdoor connectors. Next time you look up at a street light, you may notice a small cylindrical feature looking like a knob, often on the top and sometimes on the underside on the body of the luminaire. This is typically a photocell or a sensor node 
that detects the ambient light level from the sun and provides the signal to turn the luminaire on or off. But it can also be another type of sensor, for instance, motion detector or a wireless communication node to transmit and receive signals from a central control system or even an adjacent light fixture. These nodes use the circular NEMA ANSI C136.41 or Zaga Book 18 connectors I mentioned earlier. These connectors have a twist lock feature to make sure that the nodes are firmly locked into position and when properly installed, provide a ruggedized, sealed assembly. What kind of applications are we talking about here? Well, we've just talked about street or roadway lighting a bit, but these devices are not confined to just city roads for traffic. Related applications would include highways, bridges, and tunnels, some with additional functionality which would influence what types of sensor or communication nodes would be used. Indoor lighting applications actually make up the largest part of the market, especially with the growth of smart cities, smart buildings, and smart homes, and smart factories, with so many specialized lighting requirements. Typical applications include offices, meeting rooms, and residential lighting, specialized ambient lighting and retail environments or restaurants, personal task lighting, sophisticated medical and dental lighting, theater lighting, and many industrial applications, such as high bay lighting for broad illumination of huge spaces, such as factories or arenas, indoor security lighting, and underground parking. Other outdoor lighting applications can include architectural lighting, parking and pathway lighting, lighting for stadiums, construction lighting, and specialized lighting for indoor farming, which subjects equipment to high amounts of moisture. That makes sense. Okay, Peter, let's dig into some details. What does Amphenol ICC offer in terms of roadway lighting solutions? There are two main governing standards for roadway lighting photocell or sensor node connectors. These are the NEMA ANSI C136.41 and the Zaga Book 18, and Amphenol offers solutions for both. Looking at the chart on the screen now, if you start at the bottom, both of these systems have elastomeric mounting gaskets, a circular receptacle that mounts to the luminaire, a base that, together with the cover or dome, is used in a photocell or node module that plugs into the receptacle, and finally, a cap, which would be used on the receptacle in the absence of a photocell or node module. While there are a number of similarities between them, there are also some significant differences. The NEMA ANSI products have been in use for many years and so are widely adopted on a global basis, and a variety of configurations have evolved, whereas the Zaga products are relatively new, with an initial focus in European countries, although they are now starting to be used globally as well. The FLA series NEMA ANSI receptacle is considerably larger than its FLS series Zaga counterpart, at about 65 millimeters diameter versus the 30 millimeter diameter Book 18 receptacle. The overall size of the NEMA ANSI receptacle allows it to accommodate features not present in the Zaga version, such as a three large power contacts rated to 15 amps at 600 volts and up to four additional dimming contacts that can provide one or two independent signaling channels to a mated photocell or sensor node. NEMA receptacles have been in use for much longer than LED technology, so they've been designed to accommodate the higher electrical currents and voltages typically used by more energy-hungry lighting technologies. In contrast, the Book 18 receptacle has four contacts, rated at 1.5 amps and 250 volts, intended specifically for use with LED lighting technology. These four contacts provide both power and the dolly signal connection between the luminaire and the sensor node. The NEMA ANSI receptacles are provided with attached wire leads or pigtails, whereas the Book 18 receptacle provides holes on the termination end, allowing the assembler to strip and poke in the wire to make the electrical connection. Other differences include the way the receptacles are mounted. The NEMA ANSI product typically mounts with two screws from the outside, with separately provided sealing gaskets sandwiched and compressed between the receptacle and the luminaire housing. The Zaga Book 18 receptacle has a threaded plastic body which accepts a lock washer and a mounting nut that install from the inside of the luminaire housing with a silicone sealing gasket compressed between the flange of the receptacle and the outside surface of the luminaire. While the Zaga Book 18 receptacle is always firmly fixed in position after being mounted, as is the standardized NEMA receptacle, the NEMA product is also available in two different rotatable designs which allow the photocell to be oriented more precisely toward the sun to optimize performance. On the standard rotatable version, an outer housing ring is stationary in the luminaire and contains the mounting screws, which, when loosened, allow the center housing to be rotated and then clamped into position while tightening the screws on the outer ring. 
The second type of rotatable NEMA receptacle is toolless, with no mounting screws at all. The assembly makes use of a specialized spring which clamps the main housing to the luminaire and also allows the rotatable portion to be lifted away from the luminaire, rotated to the desired position, and then be lowered back and locked into position. There are no tools required to do this, hence the name toolless receptacle. The NEMA ANSI FLB series base is similar to the Zaga FLS series base. Both contain locking contacts that interface with the receptacle with PCB tails from these contacts on the upper surface for a modular assembler to mount their PC board and node electronics, and both incorporate an O-ring to provide sealing to the cover or dome after final assembly. In addition to the three locking power contacts on the NEMA base, there are also wiping contacts that interface with the dimming contacts on the receptacle, which are available in two, four, or no dimming contacts, depending on the receptacle being used. The NEMA base also has an integral seal on its mating surface to ensure IP66 protection between the mated node and the receptacle, while the Zaga base has a peripheral lip that seals to the receptacle mounting gasket, eliminating the need for a secondary seal. The NEMA FLB base has a diameter of 76 millimeters, while the Zaga Book 18 FLS series base comes in two sizes, 40 and 80 millimeter diameter, for different applications. Both NEMA and Zaga bases are available with vents designed to allow pressure equalization between the node and outside atmosphere and prevent condensation forming on inside of the node assembly. The domes or covers used with the NEMA and the Zaga bases are very similar, available in a range of heights from 25 to 130 millimeters tall and a variety of opaque, clear, or translucent colors made from UV-resistant polycarbonate material. Finally, the protective caps that are available for both standards provide environmental IP66 protection to the receptacle when there is no photocell or node being used. The Zaga Book 18 caps provides simple mechanical protection and provides no electrical function. The NEMA ANSI cap is available in a variety of types, including an open circuit design, a shorting cap design with the line and load contacts connected together, and a shorting cap with MOV design, which also provides an additional transit protection of a metal oxide varistor, or MOV, which will shunt any voltage surges from lightning or some other transient source to ground, protecting the electronics in the luminaire. The NEMA ANSI receptacles and mating products are designed to be used on the top surface of a luminaire facing the sky, while the Zaga Book 18 products can be used on the top surface or the bottom surface facing the ground and can therefore be used for a variety of sensing functions focused below the luminaire, such as movement or presence. So to recap, the Amphenol FLA FLB series on the NEMA ANSI products are similar in function to the FLS series Zaga Book 18 products, but with some very distinct differentiating features. In fact, some luminaire manufacturers are now beginning to incorporate both NEMA and Zaga connectors into the same products. Okay, so I'm also interested in indoor lighting as well, Peter. What kind of solutions do you guys have in this space? Well, more indoor luminaires are being designed to Zaga standards, which define the mechanical and electrical specifications for all the different key elements in a Zaga luminaire, so that components from different manufacturers will work together seamlessly. One important specification determines how the various electrical and electronic components interface and connect with each other, and this is defined by the Zaga Book 20 standard. The Zaga Book 20 connector is a two pin latching interface used for Dolly. Dolly 2, and D4i communication. These are used inside an indoor luminaire to connect together the LED drivers with other addressable components, such as the LED light engine, sensors, communication modules, and other components connected to the Dolly bus. They are also used on the luminaire extension bus to provide hardwired communication to the luminaire itself from other luminaires, control systems, and external sensors and modules. The Zaga standard assigns acronyms to the various components in a luminaire, starting with LEX for luminaire extension, followed by a letter defining the various parts. The plug side of the Book 20 connectors is called the LEX-LP for luminaire plug, while the receptacle connectors is termed LEX-MR for module receptacle. Amphenol's FLM series connectors were designed for and selected by the Zaga consortium to be the standardized Book 20 interface, available in wire-to-wire and wire-to-board configurations with a simple dimple latch for ease of use 
These FLM series connectors provide a fast, simple, polarized, robust system for connecting together the various components and modules inside a Zaga Luminaire and to connect to external DALI modules. These connectors have a compact design with a 2.8 millimeter pitch, but will carry currents up to seven amps when used with 18 gauge wire for reliable electrical performance. To make them as versatile as possible, wire mount plugs and receptacles are available with traditional crimp contacts, which incorporate an insulation strain relief clamp, as well as a convenient poke-in termination style for easy field servicing. So a stripped wire can be simply poked into the termination hole on the connector and it automatically clamps into position. For connecting to a PCB, the receptacles are also available in a right angle or vertical SMT mount configuration for direct integration into devices such as light engines, which may contain multiple dolly ports. All of the FLM series Book 20 connectors are available with a black or white colored housing for easy identification. This is a very new connector system for which we expect to see wide adoption and usage as the Zaga Luminar designs proliferate in the market. Okay, so the last segment we need to cover is outdoor lighting. What solutions do you guys offer here? Well, similar to indoor lighting applications, having convenient and easy to use interconnect is important for modular design as well as simplifying installation and servicing. But unlike indoor luminaires, outdoor luminaires need to incorporate an increased level of protection against environmental extremes. And the connectors need to be robust with secure latching mechanisms and have a good sealing characteristic against the accidental incursion of water into the mating and wire termination areas. One of the options we offer is our FLH series, which is a wire-to-wire, all-plastic connector system with an integrated positive latch mechanism and sealing gaskets in the mating area, as well as in the wire termination area. When mated, these connectors provide IP67 protection, so they can be submerged in one meter of water while protecting the interface. The housings are available to accommodate between two and six positions, and the crimp contacts provide a strong wire retention and insulation strain relief. With a 2.5 millimeter contact pitch, these connectors are very compact and with their three to seven amp current rating, depending on the wire gauge being used, are perfect for outdoor and harsh environment applications, including outdoor lighting, where moisture buildup and temperature extremes can be a factor. For applications requiring even more protection, Amphenol's MRD series of circular latching connectors provide a combination of versatility and robust functionality for cable to cable and cable to panel applications. These connectors have metal and plastic housings, making them impervious to mechanical shock and impact forces, and the metal thumb latch provides a secure, easy latch featuring an audible snap when the connectors are fully mated. With a variety of insert arrangements to accommodate between two to nine contacts, rated to 500 volts and up to 10 amps per pin, the rear cable gland and intermating seals provide a fully IP67 sealed mated connection which is ideal for lighting applications requiring a separable interface that may be exposed to water or even submerged for periods of time. This is a perfect connector for indoor greenhouses where specialized LED lighting is used to optimize growing conditions, often with suspended cabling that is exposed to regular water spray and high humidity levels. So our FLH and MRD sealed ruggedized connectors provide great options for a variety of outdoor lighting applications. Okay, so moving forward, Peter, where do you think the future of lighting technology is headed? You guys have some super cool stuff coming in the future, right? Absolutely, Amelia. The development of high power and energy efficient LEDs has really been enabling the technology for next generation of lighting, and growth of the IoT has enabled the advent of smart lighting, where luminaires are addressable and controlled on networks like any other smart device. One important aspect of the future of lighting is human-centric lighting, or HCL. Studies have shown that lighting can significantly influence human concentration, creativity, collaboration, and productivity. The ability of LED technology to not only illuminate space, but to manipulate the color, hue, and brightness of luminaires enables lighting to directly influence the health and well-being of people. The human eye contains non-visual photoreceptors, that are a fundamental part of regulating our biological clock. LEDs can be controlled to provide bluer light in the morning and cool yellow light toward the end of the day to mimic, indoors, the natural progression of outdoor light, which enhances our physical and mental well-being. Continuous and ongoing improvements in LED technology to increase energy efficiency, thermal management, light quality, 
and frequency purity and control are enabling this progression from the initial focus on energy efficient light through leadification to where we are today with light for sustainability through the use of intelligent lighting systems. To the next five years, where the focus will be on human centric lighting used for light for well being. As our planet experiences rapid population growth, coupled with climate change and the reduction in farmland necessary to produce high quality food, indoor farming will become increasingly important. The control over climate and increase in density of food production will be essential to ensure that we can produce enough high quality food, and LED lighting is a vital enabling technology to make this possible. Everyone who drives has an experience of the blinding glare of headlights from oncoming traffic, made even more uncomfortable and dangerous as headlamp technology improves and the light they produce just seems to get brighter. Addressed by new advancements in automotive smart and adaptive headlights, which effectively sense oncoming vehicles and objects and can actually tailor the light beam to perform road marking and prevent glare by reducing the intensity of the light directed at the drivers in the oncoming cars without diminishing the illumination of the road far ahead. From an energy perspective, the use of much lower power LEDs for street lighting and other forms of outdoor lighting creates a diminishing demand for energy that drives the need for high output power plants. This reduction in energy demand is allowing a shift to a more decentralized power generation using smaller, lower power, and more environmentally friendly technologies such as solar and wind energy. In fact, many luminaires are becoming available to supplement or satisfy their energy needs through localized solar panels right on the lamps themselves. All this is enabled through the use of high-efficiency LEDs. And finally, communications. As the radio frequency spectra becomes increasingly crowded, driven by the use of wireless communications, who doesn't have at least one cell phone now, an emerging technology called light fidelity, or LiFi uses light waves to transmit data wirelessly. The use of light to transmit data at the speed of light will enhance connectivity and improve the quality or fidelity of wireless communication while reducing the susceptibility to interference from EMI or electrically generated noise that can degrade a wireless signal. Lighting has come a long way from fire, and even though we still enjoy a nice campfire or a fireplace, We've experienced a rapidly accelerating progression in technology in just the last 150 years that is leading us to new types of sustainable lighting that integrates seamlessly with and enhances our lives. It's hard to imagine what we'll see in the next 100 years. I agree. Now, Peter, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points? Sure, but please let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to have this discussion with you on behalf of Amphenol Information, Communications, and Commercial Products. For me, the key takeaways are Amphenol is committed to being one of the premier suppliers offering LED lighting solutions, using the most current design, materials, fabrication, assembly, test, and quality processes. Amphenol has a strong product offering that is expanding to keep up with the rapidly growing LED lighting market. You will see more new interconnect products in this space in the near future from Amphenol. Amphenol has a proven track record of being first to market with products for evolving industry standards and technologies. A good example is our new FLM series Zaga Book 20 connectors. And Amphenol provides competitive pricing with shorter lead times and lower MOQs than our largest competitors. Our goal is simple. We want to be easy to do business with and provide solutions and services to our customers that enhance their own businesses and help to drive their success. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Peter. Thank you so much, Amelia. I appreciate your having me on. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol ICC. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.